Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to another video. Today we are working on this chest that I will be keeping for myself. Um, unfortunately there is a lot of chipping veneer and some water damage to the top, but the inside is in really great shape. So um, unfortunately I couldn't find a replacement for the lock, so I'm going to have to patch that up, but let's get started in vacuuming out any dust that might be in and around the piece. The bottom was absolutely covered in cobwebs, so I definitely wanted to make sure I was cleaning that and also cleaning it with some Simple Green all-purpose cleaner. I did that to the entire outside and inside of the piece and then wiped it clean with some clean water. My plan is to paint some of this chest, so I'm sorry to all the wood lovers out there. I am saving a little bit of the wood grain but there's a lot of chipping veneer and I just don't have the skills to replace that and I honestly don't really want to, so we're gonna paint it. I'm doing kind of a simple triangle design. I don't usually do designs with my pieces. I'm more of a, a simple clean kind of style, but I decided to try something new since I'm keeping this, kind of go out of my comfort zone and try a color and another product that I haven't used before. And the reason I chose this particular product is because I heard it was good for kitchen cabinets, so I wanted to try it out before I did it with such a big project as my kitchen cabinets. The front of this chest actually peeled quite easily, the sides not as much so I did have to fill it in but I figured it would save me time to just peel off the veneer instead of trying to patch it and sand it and it definitely saved me a lot of time because it wasn't that difficult to remove it. Once I got all of that veneer removed I did clean it um, just in case there was any residual glue left behind and then again wiped it clean with some clean water. I'm using some all-purpose Bondo to fill the sides of the chest. You want to make sure you are wearing a respirator, this stuff is not good to breathe in. And it's finally getting nice out here in Canada, so I've got my garage door open, trying to get as much ventilation as possible because this stuff smells really bad and I find it lingers quite a bit until it's painted. So definitely want to make sure you've got some good airflow. And I should have taped the back of this lock hole, but I had already mixed it and I wasn't thinking, so I just used my finger and it worked. I forgot about this chipping veneer on the side um, after I had bondoed everything, so then I just took a chisel and removed it. You want to be really careful with a chisel. I apparently wasn't because I did end up gouging the wood, but since I'm painting it, I just had to patch it up with some bondo and it's good as new but would have been nice not to have that extra step so just make sure you're careful and every time i looked there was just some peeling veneer everywhere so i just used some wood glue and tried to get it in there as best as i could and then put a weight on top as well as the tape to make sure it's got a good hold and once that was finished i went and scraped all of the areas that i was going to stain with my carbide scraper and it was a fairly thin finish, so it really wasn't that difficult. I probably could have gotten away with just sanding it, but I like using my scraper, so I just decided to jump right in with the scraper. With the scraper, you do want to make sure you're going with the wood grain, so I did the best I could. The wood grain was going in all different directions here, but if you go against the wood grain, it's just not going to come off smoothly. You're going to end up chipping and just ruining the piece, so make sure you're going with the wood grain and uh, getting rid of any of the dust. And then afterwards, I just sanded it with a 220 grit. Like I said, the finish was really thin, so I could have just went right in with probably a 120 but it worked out perfectly for me and then I just went ahead and sanded the Bondo as well. The texture on the trim piece after removing the veneer was quite coarse so just wanted to make sure I was sanding that smooth. And then I flipped the chest on its side so that way I could get a better angle at the edge here that I had to Bondo and it worked out pretty well. I actually didn't have to re-bondo it. I love Bondo because it's usually a one and done as opposed to wood filler. It just doesn't hold up as well. So if you haven't tried Bondo, I mean, now's your time. It's honestly such a great product. I definitely stand by it. I love using it. Once I got my sander in there the best I could, I went ahead and hand sanded it as well just to get into all the cracks. 
And since I already had the piece on its side, I went ahead and sanded the rest of the piece and all the little details here. And I'm just scuff sanding it since I'm painting it, wanting to give my paint something to adhere to. So I want to make sure that my finish is going to last, so I always scuff sand. To try to avoid more dust in my garage, I just hold my vacuum while I hand sand, and that way it hopefully collects a bunch of the dust. I think it does help. And then I did have to hammer in the nails on the bottom, it was just coming out a little bit. Once I was done with the chest on its side, I started sanding this area that I had to fill from my mishap of the chisel. And uh, I did try wood filler, but it just didn't work. I should have just went straight to my Bondo, but I was trying to avoid having to mix more Bondo. But you know, it is what it is. You live and you learn. The other side of this chest did not have the chipping veneer like this side does, so at least I didn't have to you know, screw up again with the chisel. <laughs> And then I went ahead and scuff sanded the rest of the piece with the 220 grit. Since I'm not painting the back of this piece and the hinges don't get in my way, I did decide to leave the lid on for the entire project. And I just worked around opening and closing it um, as best as I could. And I think it worked out just fine. I forgot to hit record when I use my scraper on the top triangle that I was doing here. And you'll see with the final reveal, I ended up changing my mind right before I top coated the little triangle piece that I decided to make the triangle bigger. I thought I'd be okay with a small triangle on the top and a bigger one on the bottom, but I just didn't like it. It wasn't symmetrical and I'm crazy when it comes to things being symmetrical. So. You'll see that I changed it, but I didn't film me fixing my error. Just figured I would let you know that that is what I decided to do was to completely remove all of my paint in the areas that I wanted the triangle to be bigger, sanded it, and then restained it. Before I wipe this chest down with a damp rag, I'm just getting rid of any of the dust so that way my rag doesn't get as dirty when I go to wipe away all the dust. I usually like to have two rags with me just in case one gets too full of dust that I have another one to make sure that I am completely getting rid of any dust and debris before I start priming. So my plan is to do a triangle on the top and a triangle on the front and I'm just measuring as well to make sure that it is the same on both edges and making sure that it's completely perfect. But like I said, in the end, I ended up having to completely redo this because I wanted the triangle to be bigger. For the front of this piece, I'm just kind of going with the edge of the square and just under where I had to put that Bondo because the Bondo is not stainable. It took me quite a while to get this how I wanted it and I really should have covered in the triangle with tape because when I was priming I ended up getting paint on it which was annoying and I could have you know saved myself from having to sand it again but just so you know you should cover it to save yourself that step. And then I'm just measuring at the top of the lid to where the tape is to make sure that it's the same width because the little piece there at the top, it goes along. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but one side was actually longer than the other side. So I thought I could just put the tape straight across and it would be perfect, but it turns out that one piece was longer than the other. So it's always a good idea to make sure you're measuring because you don't wanna have to completely do it again. I'm trying a different technique using a makeup sponge and some primer, very little amount of primer just to seal in the tape. Now I heard that some other people will use a clear top coat, but that doesn't really make sense to me when you're supposed to you know, use primer first. So if I had clear primer in a can, I would use that and I think I'm gonna go out and probably buy some if I ever decide to do you know, a design like this again. It worked out pretty well with this. There was a few little spots that did bleed through with the primer, but it actually turned out really well. And I think that a clear primer would definitely work 10 times better and it would probably be perfect. 
So once all of the tape was sealed with a little bit of primer, I went ahead and primed the rest of the piece and I'm using Zinsser's Bin Shellac Base Primer. This piece didn't really have any bleed through, so again, I only usually do one coat of primer anyways, unless there is bleed through. So one coat, it actually covers really great. I have used this same roller, kept it in my fridge for probably four to five projects now. It still works just fine. Like I, I don't know why people would throw it out after using it only once. You know, it's such a waste and you're bad for the planet. So reuse them, wash them um, with regular paint with this primer. Don't even bother because you have to use ammonia. But you know, with regular paint, reuse them. Don't just throw them out after one use. It's just like a, a brush that you use. You can reuse them. Once all of my primer was on and gave it time to dry, I just came back with the sanding sponge to knock down any texture that could have been left with the roller. And as always, make sure you are removing any dust left behind with a damp rag. This new to me paint is Sherwin Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel in the color Anchors Away. And I was really disappointed with the coverage of this paint. It took me four to five coats to get full coverage. The durability seems really good. I did a scratch test after my second coat and nothing came off. So it seems really good um, in durability and leveling out. There was no brush strokes, no roller marks. So I do think that it's a good paint. I'm just really disappointed in the coverage and I don't know if it's maybe the color I chose. There was some reviews that I had seen online where a lot of people had the same issue about the coverage and that it took so many coats to get full coverage. So I don't know, I might try it again in a lighter color. You know, I think obviously lighter colors don't take as many coats to begin with. So I might try it again, but I definitely would not buy this color again. That was just too many coats. Now I'm not doing a top coat because this paint does not require a top coat, which is why I wanted to try it because I do not want to top coat my kitchen cabinets. I want to be able to just paint it and have it you know, be really durable without that top coat. So that is why I decided to choose this paint. And I guess it saves me a little bit of time from not having to top coat it, but holy was four to five coats way too much. This area on the bottom of the chest luckily does not sit on the bottom of the chest, so it won't end up getting scraped off by opening and closing it all the time, but it just finishes the piece. In between my one of many, many, many coats, I sanded in between with a fine grit sanding sponge to make sure that the finish is really smooth, and it did end up being a really smooth finish. Like I said, it was just the coverage of this paint that sucked. I left the tape on until I was fully finished painting and before my last coat dried, I did remove the tape so that way it hopefully wouldn't end up ruining my finish. It looks pretty good from this far away, but if you look up closer, I mean you can see a little bit of bleed through, but it was pretty good. I'm happy with how it turned out. And now I'm just using a dark walnut stain by Varathane and I just put some delicate tape down so that way I wouldn't get it on my painted surface. And this is before I decided to change my mind on wanting a bigger triangle. And then I just wipe away any excess stain with a rag going with the wood grain so that way there's less of a chance of streaking. This is my second or third time using a staining sponge and I actually think I'm starting to like it more. Once you get more stain on it, it doesn't absorb it as much. So I'm not wasting the stain and it doesn't leave you know, any lint behind and it's reusable. So I just keep it in my freezer, you know, saving myself from using rags other than when I'm wiping away the excess. I let the stain dry for about two days before applying my top coat and I'm using Varathane Diamond Wood Finish in Satin. I'm doing about 
two to three coats. I don't think that this is going to get very much use because it's just a, a cedar chest blanket box. You know, I'm not going to be using it like a table like the people before me apparently did with all those watermarks. And I'm just trying to go with the wood grain as best as I can to minimize any streaking that can happen with this top coat. Since this top coat has a really low odor, I just decided to bring in the cedar chest to be able to do it inside. You less dust, there's a lot of dust in the garage and I don't want it to get on my finish, so I didn't mind bringing it in and doing the top coat inside. If I'm being totally honest, I'm not sure I'm in love with the final product. I just don't know about the blue. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. I think it turned out okay, but I'm just, I don't know, not too sure. So let's have another quick look at the before, and now here's the after. Mm -hmm. 